name is Terry, and I'm the children's librarian with the Louisville Free Public Library. And today we're going to do a story time on respect, something that we all like to get. So first we're going to do our opening song. Are you ready? Grab a book, grab a book, grab a book, grab a book today. Take a look in the book. Take a look in the book, I say. Read a book, read a book, read a book, read a book, okay. And you'll find that your mind will happily drift away. So today I brought two friends with me who are going to help me explain what respect means. This is Poupette. Hello. And this is Elizabeth. Hello. So who would like to go first in talking about respect? Well, Poupette, would you mind if I go first? Oh, sure, go right ahead. Thank you. Well, respect is simply treating people the way you would like to be treated. Because we don't all think the same, or look the same, or eat the same foods, or dress the same. But the thing we have in common is we all feel the same. Oh, you are so right. We all want to be happy and we all want people to be nice to us. Everyone laughs and cries and has all the same feelings. So it's important that we try to help each other be happier. Right. Well, I will always respect you. I will always respect you. And I will always respect you too. So the first book I'm going to read is a book called Goat's Coat. And it's written by a man named Tom Percival and illustrated and colored by a person named Christine Pym. Goat's Coat. Let me tell you the tale of Alfonso the goat, who was terribly proud of his lovely new coat. It had bright shiny buttons all made out of glass and a collar the color of freshly cut grass. <clears throat> People turned to admire as Alfonso walked by. Oh, what a marvelous coat, he heard someone sigh. Alfonso was happy. He pranced and he skipped. And then he heard a sad noise croaking out of a ditch. Ooh, I better go see what that is. Deep down in the ditch was a family of frogs that used to live there in a mossy old log. But the log wasn't there. It had rotted away. And the frogs from the log now had nowhere to stay. <gasps> oh, this is a terrible situation. <laughs> The frogs were distraught. Oh, please help us, they cried. Ribbit, <laughs> ribbit. And Alfonso felt sorry for them, so he tried. He unpicked some stitches upon his new coat and using the fabric helped make them a boat. The frogs were delighted. He just made their day. Oh, thank you, they croaked as they all sailed away. Ribbit, ribbit, ribbit. Alfonso's new coat didn't look quite so smart, but he felt a warm glow in the depths of his heart. He clipped happily on until he came to his shed. The sound from within filled Alfonso with dread. Oh no, what could possibly make such a sad sound as that? Alfonso peered in. And then he saw it, ah, a cat. The cat was trembling and terribly pale. It was clear to see that she'd hurt her tail. It's caught in a mouse trap. Alfonso got busy and cleared up the cut and then using his coat, he bandaged it up. The cat was so glad, so grateful and happy. Meow, meow. But Alfonso's coat was now looking quite ratty. I think he used the whole bottom of his coat for a bandage. Meow! He clip-clopped along through the crisp winter's day. He was whistling a song when a hen came his way. Bluk, 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 bluk. The hen was upset. 
She'd lost one of her chicks. Could this be something Alfonso could fix? Together the hen and Alfonso looked around, but the hen's little chick just couldn't be found. Boop, 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 boop. And then somewhere up high, a voice cried, Help me! And there was the chick stuck up in a tree. So Alfonso removed even more of his coat and tied it together to make a long rope. He gritted his teeth, then climbed up like a rocket. He came down again with the chick in his pocket. Alfonso's new coat was now looking a mess. Still, what's done is done, and it was all for the best. As Alfonso walked on, there were more problems still, but he helped solve them all with his coat and his skill. Alfonso's new coat was now just a few threads, but he thought of the good deeds that he'd done instead. Ooh, the weather grew colder. Snow fell all around. Ooh, poor coatless Alfonso trudged back toward town. Brrr. The blizzard grew worse. It got colder and colder. Alfonso took shelter behind a large boulder. Alfonso was freezing and night would soon fall. And so he curled up in a cold little ball. But then he heard voices ring out through the night. Someone was shining around a bright light. Here came the frogs, the cat, and the hen. He wasn't alone, he'd been found by his friends. And seeing them all made Alfonso feel better. And not only that, they had brought him a sweater. They had made it themselves from the things they could find. A gift to Alfonso for being so kind. And so our dear goat had made best friends forever. And he wore his new sweater. What? Ever the weather. The end. So one of the ways we show respect to people is by saying please and thank you. So I'm going to show you how to say please and thank you in sign language. It's very simple. The way you say please is, and you just make circles, small circles on your chest. Can you do that? Please. And then thank you. You. you just touch your chin thank you and you know the surprising part that's also the same way you say you're welcome you're welcome thank you you're welcome our next book is about a favorite topic of mine bugs ants specifically so this book is written by two people named Philip and Hannah Hoos and it's drawn by a person named Debbie Tilly. And this is called, Hey Little Ant. I think ants get a bad rap, personally. Hey Little Ant. The kid says, Hey Little Ant down in the crack. Can you hear me? Can you talk back? See my shoe? Can you see that? Well, now it's going to squish you flat. The ant says, Oh, please, oh, please do not squish me. Change your mind and let me be. I'm on my way with the crumb of pie. Please, oh, please don't make me die. Anyone knows that ants can't fill. You're so tiny, you don't look real. I'm so big and you're so small. I don't think it would hurt you at all. But you are a giant and giants can't know how it feels to be an ant. Come down close. I think you'll see that you are very much like me. 
Are you crazy? Me? Like you? Well, I have a home and a family too. You're just a speck that runs around. No one would care if my foot came down. Oh, big friend, you are so wrong. My nest mates need me because I am strong. I dig our nest and feed baby ants too. I must not die beneath your shoe. But my mom says that ants are rude. They carry off our picnic food. They steal our chips and breadcrumbs too. It's good if I squish a crook like you. Hey, I'm not a crook, kid. Read my lips. Sometimes ants need crumbs and chips. One little chip can feed my town. So please don't make your shoe come down. But all my friends squish ants each day. Squishing ants is a game we play. They're looking at me. They're listening too. They all say that I should squish you. Come on, squish him, do it now. I can see you're big and strong. Decide for yourself what's right and wrong. If you were me and I were you, what would you want me to do? Should the ant get squished? Should the ant go free? It's up to the kid, not up to me. We'll leave the kid with the raised up shoe. What do you think that kid should do? So what do you think? Would you squish the ant? Or would you not squish the ant? You wanna know what I would do? I would respect that ant and let it go home to its family. Let's sing a little song about respect. Respect for you, respect for me, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect is something we will show when we treat each other right. Respect's not just what kids should do, grown-ups should respect kids too. Listening to each other and speaking with kind words. Respect for you, respect for me, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect is something we will show when we treat each other right. So our last book that we're going to read is a book called Lovely, and it's written and illustrated by a person named Jess Hong. Lovely. What is lovely? Lovely is different. Can you see what's different about her? Notice her eyes, one is brown and one is blue. I have a dog like that actually, and she is a beautiful. So lovely is different. Lovely is black and white. Lovely is tall and short. So you see the tall person has a tiny dog and the not so tall person has a gigantic dog. Lovely, L-O-V-E-L-Y, lovely. Lovely is simple and lovely is complex. Lovely is fluffy, and lovely is sleek. Lovely, L-O-V-E-L-Y, lovely. Lovely is soft, and lovely is sharp. Lovely is big, and lovely is small. Lovely. Here they're spelling it in sign language. Would you like to do it with me? 
with them. L. Can you make your hand like this? L. O. V. E. Where you put your thumb under your fingers. L. Y. Lovely. Lovely is fancy and sporty and graceful and stompy. Lovely. Everybody's lovely. Lovely is different, weird, and wonderful. Lovely is you, and lovely is me. We are all lovely, and you are all lovely. You are so lovely, and you are loved. And now we're going to sing our goodbye song. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together at the library, where my books are your books and your books are my books. The more we get together, the happier we'll be and the smarter. Well, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you later. Have a good spring. <laughs>